Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Sim UK. Welcome to my first look at Orbit Industries. This is an interesting game. I quite like it. I like the look of it. A look of it. Um, the play style of it is completely unique. I don't recall having ever played any game uh, similar to this. The tutorial is a little bit lackluster, and um, the learning curve. It's not that steep, um, but rather the UI is sort of a little bit non-intuitive, let's say. Um, I'll explain all of this as best I can in a minute. I've played about three hours of this game and there's still a million things I don't yet understand, but I thought I'd get some gameplay together and let you see what the gameplay is like. Um, <clears throat> before we progress and do that though, I just want to say it has got mostly positive reviews. It came out on the 21st of April 2022. It's from Lab132 and the publishers are Clubata. Um, but what I wanted to show you is things like this. These are two very early um, achievements that you can unlock. Uh, serious research. Unlock your first researchable module. Only 62.7% of players have this achievement. That's pretty low, considering it's one of the first things you can do. Uh, rookie contractor, complete 15 projects. Doesn't take long to do that either. Only 55.6% of players have this achievement. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, I think it's because the tutorial is um, not extensive enough. It's, the tutorial is pretty good, but it doesn't explain the UI very well. And the UI is slightly less than intuitive and I think that's really going to hold people up. Do you need to be um, well educated to play this game? No, not really. The actual gameplay mechanics are very simple. Um, it's about building and constructing and expanding and researching and etc etc etc. As you can see from the sort of opening lab here there are modules being added up onto modules and expanded upon etc etc. That's basically what has to happen. It's a little bit more intricate than that. There are some like uh, electrical systems you have to put together, but they're not really like electronics. You don't have to understand electronics at all. Um, I think the best thing to do is probably to jump in and show you what I know. Now I'm going to be using a controller actually, and um, instead of a mouse and keyboard, but I actually feel like a mouse and keyboard is probably the easiest way to play this game. Um, let's jump in anyway, let's jump in and you can see for yourself whether it's the sort of game you'd be interested in. I've got to say it's a slow burn, um, you know if I'm boring you already then you're probably not going to enjoy this game because it's not action packed. My distinct impression is that later on down uh, the game progression line things will get far more intense um, and far more complicated and you'll be doing multiple things at the same time but right now when you start the game at least you have very limited resources very limited power very limited uh, personnel and that really does restrict and limit what you can do so uh, you've got difficulty levels here <clears throat> I'm just playing on economy which is normal and normal errors uh, because any element you add and create errors. There is a way I think of reducing the number of errors but one of the problems is that the tutorials that pop up disappear quite quickly and as yet I haven't been able to bring them back up again. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. This is kind of the problem with the game but it doesn't mean it's not a good game it just means that the tutorial was written by somebody who already knows how to play the game and they left out some really important key bits of information which hopefully I'll be able to fill in for you at least a little bit um, until I get stuck myself. Right, let's begin shall we. <clears throat> Mission type. No time for caution. Whilst guarding the borders along the Galga system, a wrecked ship of an unknown species was discovered. Discoveries like these always bring inherent curiosity and danger with them preparations for an investigation and or rescue mission are underway. I presume that's where we are. So the uh, D-pad is how you control Good day, menus. Good day. 
This briefing will guide you through the main tasks in Orbit Industries. Your task will be to extend the station and produce resources. These resources are needed to generate income from contract work, so-called projects. So you can see it starts off quite well, highlights the button that you need to press in order to open the menu that you need to get to. Already you can see that the tutorial has disappeared and there's no way on earth that I've discovered um, if you forgive the pun, to open that back up again. So if there was something you didn't understand or something you didn't quite hear, um, you, you're going to struggle a little bit to get going. But um, let's open up the SMI. This view shows all projects which are currently available. Completing projects will produce income or unlock new technologies and some will progress you through the mission. Icons inside the project entry show which kinds of resources are needed to start the project. If a system is missing that produces this resource, it is grayed out. In this case, a briefing center needs to be built before the project can be started. Okay, so let me just go over that one more time because although that's quite clear and quite intuitive, I mean, if you're not intimidated by this UI, then you should be because nothing means anything all of these are abbreviations obviously lab is a lab as you might expect but nothing else really sort of makes any sense um, as I mentioned if you're using a keyboard and mouse it's a lot easier because you just mouse over things but if you're using a controller then the left mouse button you can see I'm up here on open positions the sorry the d-pad uh, is how you navigate menus using the thumbsticks will not work um, but that isn't explained per se things like that you're going to sort of trip over a little bit so hopefully i can just smooth some of this out for you so each of these icons here represent a module um, like a building an add-on that you can put onto the station at the moment we have this green one which i think is a lab and this yellow one which I'm not even going to guess what that is, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but whatever whatever these three things are, we need these three in order to complete this particular contract. So you can see at the moment we have only one contract available to us. What will happen is you have mission contracts, you have research which allows you to unlock modules that you can put onto the ship. And pretty quickly we're going to get to the point where we can't complete any more mission jobs because we need to unlock um, a certain module but we can't unlock that module until we have a certain number of staff on the ship as yet um, although I know how to build more staff accommodation I don't know how to get more power and obviously the more modules you have the less power you have so at the moment for me it feels like the tutorial is going really slowly uh, and I'm progressing through the game far quicker than the tutorial is going to let me. So there seems to be a lot of holding me back uh, as a player. And I think that needs to be addressed in the game. Um, and I'll, I'll try and explain this as much as I can. Not just for your benefit as a player, but also for the devs' benefit if they happen to watch this video. Try and give them some sort of insight. I've already explained that the UI is quite intimidating when you first open it. To be honest with you, it's very, very straightforward and simple, but until you sort of play the game for maybe an hour or something, everything just confuses you. There's so much information here, but you don't know what any of it means. Um, so that's one thing they could do. They could just sort of spend a little bit more time just helping you navigate the menus and understand what everything is to start with. So uh, hopefully I'll pull you up to speed. Right. So, contracts, missions, research, all on the left-hand side. The central section here gives you a breakdown. You can see over on the right-hand side we've got detailed information about this particular uh, project. Uh, the requirements, we need uh, 50 value of lab. So we need a lab that can provide 50 units. And we need a BCE system that can provide 50. We don't have that at the moment. So we're going to go and build that by leaving this screen. The station can be extended at connectors. There are blue and yellow ones that each link specific modules. Select a blue connector since the briefing center can only be built there. Okay, so 
if I use the left thumbstick on my controller, and I think this is again, if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, it's going to be a lot easier. You just you click, zoom in, rotate, click. There you go. So I've selected that blue thing. So with the control keyboard and mouse, it's a lot easier. With the controller, if I move my left thumbstick, you can see that I've got a jump option. Um, so if I wanted to get to that one, I would sort of aim at it and click jump. But the clump but the jump button also uh, starts building and does a whole bunch of other stuff. So you're going to make some mistakes as well. Um, but rotating this. Um, ship is quite simple with the right thumb th thumbstick you hold down the R1 trigger and pull it down push forwards and it will zoom in and zoom out on the element that you're on. Graphically I think it looks pretty nice there's a whole bunch of stuff going on that I don't know anything about for example there's some red lines that come off you see those red lines um, resources or people or something keeps arriving through that portal but again that's not explained very well so I don't know what it does. Uh, the blue modules will only connect blue modules and the yellow modules will only connect uh, connect sorry yellow modules but what you can do if you look over here on the left hand side these are all connectors these are again this is not well explained um, you got some nice little color information here so this A16M, click on that, okay. so an A16M has two blue connectors, one blue connector this end, one blue connector that end, and you can see that if I built that it would allow me a bit of space to attach something. Now this is, you might think, wow look at the size of that module, that's huge. It's not. In comparison to some of the other modules, that's quite a small one. Um, so you are going to have to expand out a lot. Uh, this one here, this has a six-way. So this one's great for perhaps adding um, modules like this one, which is a, a personnel module, so you can get more people to work on the, um, on the space station. Um, and then you've got some here that have got yellow and blue so if I click on that you can see we've got two yellow connectors and a blue connector which is this one here so you don't get all three to connect to afterwards there are three in total and you will use one of them in order to connect it to the ship so now with that in mind I'm going to select this unit here uh, and doing all this on the controller is actually a lot more difficult um, whilst you're in here clicking up and down on the modules if you click right you'll actually get access to the um, main units I guess so you've got a workforce place here you can see the blue outline there is very similar this blue outline is very similar to this it's because they're the same um, you can build a lab you can build a BCE you can build an ADM now if we go back to our mission just to sort of tie it all in you can see that the icon here is a BCE, so we need to. The build station can be extended at connectors. There are blue and yellow ones that each link specific modules. Select a blue connector since the briefing center can only be built there. Well, that's pretty cool because um, that's the first time I've managed to get the tutorial to come up twice. So what we come, over, what we're going to do is we're going to go right. So we're going to come over to a BCE. Do you see how big that is? That is massive. That's how big these units are. Uh, so I'm going to build that one there. And we now have a BCE unit, but that's not it. That's just uh, the installation part of it. If we press Y now, we this open up another control module. control which resources are produced. Only fully wired systems produce resources. These will be required by projects or other systems. So, in a very layman way, um, we have a battery here which is supplying power. And you can see the power is being transitioned down these wires to a multitude of different um, components. So, this is the laboratory, um, this is the airlock and this is the environmental control. Now different missions are going to require different elements 
Uh, one example here is the Habitat capsule um, is not actually connected. So uh, one thing I could do is connect that up. But you'll notice that the, um, the amount of power um, here, if I hover over it, um, at the moment it's running at 0% efficiency. So um, nothing is uh, using that whatsoever. You can see how much output I create. And what you might have to do is build two laboratories in order to complete a mission so you've got enough output to cover the cost of the mission, etc, etc, etc. But up in the top left hand corner you can see we have one deployable system. So if I press the left mouse button and then I click confirm, it will bring that briefing sensor which we just built onto the, uh, onto the uh, framework, if you want to call it that. And you can place it any way you like and you can rotate it, etc, etc, etc. Systems that are required by the briefing center are already placed and fully wired. Required systems are shown as input in the overview panel of a system chip or the chip itself. And the way that everything connects is pretty good. Uh, the only difficulty I've had is trying to swap from a yellow wire to a blue wire. But um, sometimes it's easier to connect from here to a wire. Sometimes it's actually easier to connect from a wire to here. But that is it. That is now fully connected. Um, so, uh, so I'm not paying attention to the tutorial here. The time is currently stopped. So if you press the R1 trigger whilst you're in this view, um, other than zooming in and out, you can also uh, change the, the speed of time, which is indicated in the bottom left hand corner. So at the moment it's paused. If I press A, see that power starts going to these systems and uh, it should come online you know, the battery is running at 100 percent efficiency the briefing center is fully connected projects that depend on it can now be accepted okay, so this is now fully functioning well 93 percent fully functioning because this one battery isn't enough to power it all um, as yet i haven't unlocked the ability to get new batteries it may actually be the something else that's causing that i think it's the battery i think i need another battery you can see that the laboratory is only running at 88 percent capacity itself um, i'm not going to plug this in just yet but um, this is now functioning so we can close that screen and it's for the mission the project is now ready to be started so I'm navigating the missions and contracts etc on the left, if I press right <clears throat> I can see that I have all three of these required elements. This is how long it's going to take, I don't know what a T stands for, um, but uh, it's going to cost us uh, 100,000 to run this mission. Most uh, contracts will make money, oh, actually this might be money coming in, uh, but any which way um, we need to keep an eye on our finances over here. So let me um, start playing the game. I've, I've, I think I've given you enough of a, an insight into what's going on. Processing a project takes some time. You can see the progress when you select the tabs to filter on the left. So um, using the menu in the top left hand corner, you can see if I click on contracts, we've got none. Research, we've got none. Missions, we've got none. But if I click on active contracts, um, you can see that we do have one active contract. Um, when, we, when you've got a lot of these, obviously you'll need to navigate between them in order to finish stuff off. Um, but these progress bars over here on the right will go all the way up to 100%. <coughs> excuse me. And there's a little bit of information as well about the mission, etc. Uh, in the project details. Uh, but now when it's complete, you see that little close pops up. And when you're using keyboard and mouse, it's a lot easier. Um, but when you're navigating with the D-pad, it just pops up and you complete it, and that's how you get your money. More projects will be available from now on. Follow the mission projects to achieve the overall objective. Great success. Commander, a ship on its patrol on the Galgar system borders found a wrecked ship. The model and origin species could not be determined. They have asked us if we could investigate the shipwreck. Okay, so if you come down to mission and click on mission, you can see that you've got uh, a wrecked ship um, 
it's going to take 70t we don't earn any money for missions um, but obviously that progresses the game so i'm going to start that the rescue team has been dispatched we expect them to return in a few ticks with results a running project occupies systems so they are unavailable for other projects as long as the project is active so as she said any resources being utilized by a mission or a contract or a research uh, theory cannot be used for something else as well so you can also see top left hand corner we got some contracts now we got seven contracts we've got three research options a water synthesizer which requires 160 personnel that's what that little purple michelin looking guy is um, and if we come out of this screen completely in the bottom left hand corner you can see what our current supply workforce is and what the current demand is so we're pretty close to um, maxing out that um, but not at the moment oh I see time is in ticks uh, that's why she said in a few ticks so now we know what T stands for right so as I say you know I am still learning stuff as we go through um, you can also navigate around and click on different things in, um, sometimes it's difficult to get an angle on what you're trying to click on but you can get information like for example over here aim at this laboratory running at 88% efficiency etc 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 this is all information that you can find in this screen as well 88% efficiency but um, it's entirely up to you which way around to do it now what I'm going to do whilst we're waiting for that mission to complete is look at the contracts and see how many of these I can do so the top one I can do and that one I can't do so I'm going to go proof of life and you notice some of the others that were possibly available are no longer available because we're using that resource of something else so back up to the top left hand menu come down to the active jobs we can flick between them and the information on the right gives you a detailed breakdown of each of the missions and the blue bars indicate the amount of progress we've made once again missions don't earn you any money but contracts do um, you just need to keep this sort of about 4,000 is what I've sort of tried to, tried to do. If you press R1 and press B, it will speed up time. And certainly at the beginning of the game, I think you're going to be doing this quite a bit because we have very limited resources and that means we can't be doing a lot at the same time. As things progress, <clears throat> I think things will get far more intricate and detailed and demanding but for now we're quite happy commander the rescue team has returned from shipwreck and the results are available for review in the station management interface right so we can close the wreck ship mission commander the rescue team recovered an encrypted data core from the unknown ship besides that there was nothing more that could be rescued i think we should task our scientists to decrypt the data core as soon as possible be aware that credits are only earned upon completion of projects. So that's her way of saying don't forget to try and earn some cash. So proof of life is nearly completed. I'm going to speed that up. And you can see we have a new mission option now. But we can't do it because we don't have the uh, access to the research lab just yet. Now that this is complete, we can complete that. We earn the money. Going to the mission and now it's Our right. best data engineer started to decipher the encrypted core. At a first glance, the used encryption does not reflect any known algorithms to us. This might take a while. Okay, so this game is available on pretty much every single platform, including Linux, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, anybody can play this. It's definitely going to be available for anyone. And... Um, Hopefully I'm showing that it's 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 not exactly complicated, it's just that the UI is a little bit confusing and there's one of those deliveries coming in, which I can't get access to. Connecting. There's no sound in space, but uh, Especially with the rockets going off. 
heading back to Earth, I guess that's what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Um, okay, so. Um, from this point, I'm going to try and just sort of play the game a bit. So I have two active missions to speed up time. Good news, Commander. Our data engineer successfully deciphered the recovered data core. Results are ready to review in the station management interface. Commander, breaking the encryption was a hard task for all staff involved, but it seemed to be just the tip of an iceberg of secrets. Against expectations, the data core did not only hold ship logs, mapping coordinates or crew diaries. While some data couldn't be restored, a big part of it looked like a compendium of cultural, historical and technological information. An extensive data comparison should be carried out in order to determine similarities with known data. Okay, so new mission in. And this requires an extra module, which is this, whether well, that is an ADM. So we'll be coming over here and uh, selecting a blue point, I suspect. Click on build, come over here to ADM. Again, look at that, absolutely massive. Uh, taking up a huge amount of space and power, no doubt, which you must not forget to do. You have to come in here and click on the deployable system. And find a logical place for it to live. Now, I don't Every know. system that is placed costs upkeep each tick. The amount can be seen on the overview panel of systems or their modules. The global income and expenditure of your station is listed inside the station management interface in the tab finance overview. So yeah, <clears throat> as she very sort of succinctly uh, identified, everything you put down um, takes power. Now, there is yet another resource that all systems need, which is not distributed through wires, workforce. In this mission you started with some workforce already. This resource is needed to keep the efficiency of other systems at their maximum. So in the end, they will produce faster. Building and connecting workforce systems will increase the maximum workforce that is available on your station. It will slowly increase until it reaches the limit. You can see the available workforce on the left and the required on the right side of the parameter panel. Parameter panel is bottom left hand corner. So you can see the supply is 100, the demand is 94. So we've got six people more than what we need. Um, so I'm just going to slow things down again. <clears throat> um, and sort of identify, I think I mentioned this already. Um, so this little section here, if I can get to difficult to navigate. Once you've done it a few times it's easier but you're still going to make mistakes. So this module here is uh, where the um, workforce live. This is a bit about where you should go if nothing particularly exciting happens. And there's somebody who's going to land and... no? I was thinking maybe some new workforce were going to arrive. But uh, yeah, anyway, so the more of these you build, um, the more power they take. So uh, this one is, although attached to the base, it's not actually functional. So what we have to do is come in here and connect it. It's pretty straightforward. See the habitat capsule is now running at 73%, and our supply is 102, demand is 94. The supply, bottom left hand corner, will keep going up with every tick. Um, and if we build more stuff, then the demand will go up as well. That's how that works. Um, for now, though, that's probably all we need to do. That's probably all we can afford to do. Navigating with a, a controller is somewhat tricky to start with. 
Once we get used to it, it's fine. Okay, let's put a couple of modules in here. If there are two or more blue connectors on a preview module, you can choose between them. Yeah. So, uh, what she means by that is um, if I sort of install something with that. See how there's two blue modules? You can switch between which one you want to uh, connect, I guess is what she's saying. So I'm going to go down that route just to prepare myself for the uh, incoming module, whatever that will be. And we've actually got some space to install it. Because that's going to be the key problem here, I think, is uh, running out of space. That's, that's basically what's all about. Let's go see how this mission is doing. Uh, did I not start that mission? One mission. The administration team is eagerly starting to filter and category the vast amount of new data. And whilst that mission is running, I'm going to look at contracts and just see what I can run here. Obviously, some jobs get paid better than others, some I can't do. I'm just going to go for the highest paying one for now, but sometimes it's more cost effective to have two smaller missions running. Uh, you can actually make more money doing it that way. So it's just a case of looking at it. Research, again, uh, we won't have access to the water synthesizer until we reach 160. <clears throat> now what's going to happen is we're going to reach a point where the mission requires a module which we don't have. Um, so if I come up here and navigate over to the station details, you can change the logo, uh, or the emblem, I should say. You can change the name, um, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, you can also come down here to mission details. This tells you where you are on the overall mission right now. Resource details, this gives you an overview of everything that you're running, um, and it gives you kind of a, a clunky digital display uh, interface on how much surplus or shortage you have. Um, I guess they're color coordinated to the colors of the squares, but to be honest with you, I look at that and it doesn't immediately give me any decent information. Maybe as I play the game a little bit more, that'll become more useful, but right now I just just accept the fact that it's there. One of the most important things is the model mo <clears throat> module glossary. Once you're in here, you can navigate to the right and it will fill you in on information about all this stuff. Now, the thing that we're going to need in a bit, is it that one? No, is, let me find it, conference room. So we're going to be tasked with a mission job. But I can't get access to that until I have 250 workforce. Now the problem with that is, every time I expand the amount of workforce accommodation we have, I need to have more power. And as yet, I haven't played it for about three hours, I still don't know how to put power in. So we're going to try and play through that if we can. Right, let's go back to procurement. See, so we have two active missions. That one's coming along quite nicely. That one's about halfway, so I'm just going to speed up time. Like I said at the beginning, you're going to be doing this quite a lot, I think. Contract has completed. I'm going to immediately go and look for another contract. I'm going to try and get two of those on the go. And that is because the Commander, mission. The administration has filtered and categorized the data from the recovered data core. We should see what they found. So, and that's because the mission was still running, but also I've now got to sort of read this and understand what's happening in the mission before I move on to the next job. So. 
it always makes good sense to try and get some money coming in whenever you can. Data comparison showed that 92% of the contained and readable information was similar to already known knowledge. Within the 8% left that was unknown, star position data extracted from the core showed that the ship was from an unmapped region near the center of the galaxy. Not reachable within the current technical limits and based on its age and engine, the ship could not have traveled the distance by itself. Given the origin of the data, to determine the further procedures with the gained knowledge, a commission of external consultants, experts and decision makers should be formed. Okay, so let's go down to completed. Let's close that mission. Go to contracts. Let's try and get another mission on the go. And uh, let's go over here to the mission and see what we need. So, you can see... <clears throat> The lab is being used, the uh, comms room, is it the BCE, sorry, is being used, so we can't start the mission because of that. But we also need, um, consider you see the one that was just unlocked, we also need considerably more ADM, we need 640, um, and at the moment, uh, uh, sorry, we need 580, at the moment we only have one um, uh, module that meets that requirement. So before I can do anything else, I need to build another module for this. Um, where shall I build it? You can see already how huge these things are. Let's try and get on here. There we go. And that's got all three. So I need to build a second ADM. Last time I did this, it let me build it immediately. I'm guessing, yeah, that's, um, you see it's colliding with something here. But the only way I can build that there is to um, expand it. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to move it somewhere else. So let's try and move it here. I'm not sure if it's going to fit there either. Nope, still a negative. Let's try jumping into this module. This should be fine, this one. If not, we'll expand. There we go. You can see just how huge these things are. They are enormous. Um, and really does cause quite a few problems. Right, uh, so let's go to the ISL, I think it's called. And we have one deployable system. Exactly the same as the last system. So I'm going to try and close to that. Multiple projects are awaiting completion in the station management interface. moaning at me because I'm not reacting to stuff quick enough. Obviously when you're not talking about what you're doing it's a lot quicker to do. Um, but anyway, so these are both running at 58%. Uh, if I close this and go back into this section, you can go down to the mission, you can see we now have all of those modules that we require. Thank you Commander. The first steps to form a commission are underway. Can't run any other contracts because we just don't have uh, any modules spare. Supply is 142, demand is 116, so it's probably a good idea that I consider the idea. Based of, uh, navigating where I want to. This is going to be tricky. It's so much easier playing with the keyboard and mouse. enough space there to squeeze that in which is lovely I'll go back into the um, ASL on deployable system we have one habitat there I'm just going to stick this one right next to it 
this about. Now, you can see that we're actually going to be running at really low efficiency. Um, so this isn't really going to help us a huge amount because it's only running at 41%. But what will happen is I can either disconnect one of these administration centers because we won't need two for every mission, which will boost the efficiency of everything else. Or um, as we progress and I figure out how to get more batteries, I'm hoping this will indeed expand as well. Um, it's difficult to know why it's a little orange. Commander, the Commission has completed its analysis of the data and made a particular interesting discovery. More information is available in the station management interface. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the SMR in a second. There's a little orange triangle in this bottom right hand corner. I'm wondering if that's indicating the airlock. Yeah, because this is running at 100%, this is running at 100%. So maybe it's the airlock that's the problem. Maybe if I build another airlock, so Multiple projects are awaiting completion in the station management interface. Um, so let's just see if I can get the airlock. That is an airlock, an ELO. Right. That's pretty cool, and you can see we've got. As your station gets bigger, the chance for errors increases as well. They can occur on every module and will have a negative impact on the efficiency of your station. Systems with errors have reduced efficiency. The more severe an error is, the worse the efficiency will be. Yeah. So any module that you attach can have errors, and obviously errors. And uh, it will reduce the efficiency that it will uh, be able to run at. So let's um, just get this airlock installed. Um, I'm actually going to go here. The output of a system is distributed to its connected systems. If a system gets less than the maximum of any input resource, its efficiency is reduced. This will slow down progress of running projects that depend on these systems, while the upkeep costs of the used systems stay the same. So that has definitely boosted the habitat capsule for now to 65%. Um, so yeah, I guess the little, I could be wrong, but I guess that little orange uh, triangle there could be an indication of what they're lacking. Um, or maybe there's a better way of figuring this out, I don't know. But anyway, that has definitely improved things. So we're, we're in a pretty good state there. The more people we have, the more chance we have to unlock more cool stuff. Let's get out of the screen. Let's go and complete all three of these missions. So, mission, mission, uh, sorry, contract, contract, mission. Further analysis of the recovered data core revealed an extremely advanced type of subatomic energy compound. For easier communication, Omega Q was chosen as a project name for this compound. A basic resource for Omega Q is a rare metallic mineral. The Commission requests the construction of a mine to start the production of Omega Q. Okay, so we need to start mining Omega Q. So, if we come into mission, you see that we've now reached the point where we don't have this particular module available to us. So, we've got a supply of 187 people, a demand of 130. If I come back into this screen and go to the station overview down here to the module glossary, spin my way across till I find that icon. There it is. I need 250 people working here to unlock that before I can complete any more of the mission. Um, so I guess this is sort of the end of the tutorial if you will and it's now up to me to sort of manage systems and contracts and income etc. And, um, yeah. Am I ready to do that? I'm totally sure. Hopefully I am. But, um, if you haven't kind of got the gist of the game yet, um, then maybe this is not the kind of game for you as well, I'm thinking. But 
if you're thinking, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm following along with this, this is kind of making a lot of sense. Let's and an error may also spread, spread across your station. station. Depending on the kind of error, it will spread differently. The chance for errors and their spreading can be reduced by infrastructure modules. These modules affect other modules in a certain range. More detailed information can be found in the station overview inside the station management interface. So the station overview is this page. I'm guessing where she wants you to look is the module glossary. But she was talking about environmental controls responsible for controlling and maintaining the environmental parameters at atmospheric composition, atmospheric pressure and temperature. Um, it requires seven people to run it and an upkeep cost of 0.18k and it costs 22,000 to build. It will output 14, input requires three power, um, so maybe it's worthwhile just trying to chuck one of those in if I can just reduce the chances of errors occurring. And they will start occurring pretty flipping quickly. Um, truth be told, let's try to have a look-see here. I don't want to block myself in any particular direction. I kind of feel like that's quite central. So if I can get in there, go for Briefing Centre, Laboratory, Habitat Caption. There you go. Top right hand corner, we have C C2O errors. It's an airlock. Habitat, Laboratory, Briefing Centre, Administration. Right, so maybe I don't have access to that right now. Let's go to the module glossary again. It's interesting. It doesn't say it's not available to me, which means, like this one, for example. The monetary resources of the station are on a critical level. It is advised completing some additional contracts to improve the situation. Okay. Talking too much and not paying enough attention. I was absolutely smashing the contracts out of the park. Just trying to get that going again. Let's see when I'm going to be able anything until I've done this. Until I've got some jobs in. So let's just speed things up. I hope we don't go bankrupt before it happens. Two out of fifty contracts. Good thing is I think uh, is you never run out of contracts as soon as one comes in and one uh, as soon as one's completed and another one comes in. I did say sort of trying to keep it around 4,000 seemed to work for me, um, so that's what I'm going to try and do. <clears throat> Get it back up to 4,000, maybe slow the game down or pause it so I can have a look at this uh, module that we want to try and build. So yeah, I mean really basically boils down to not an RTS but like a management game I would say um, I don't think I've ever played anything quite like this once you get past the sort of learning curve the tutorial um, it, I think it becomes pretty self-explanatory it's not that I don't think it's that deep I mean obviously there's a whole bunch of modules I haven't got access to yet there's a whole load of uh, missions that I haven't even started yet so uh, yeah I mean I could be Wrong on that front. There could be loads of really cool stuff heading our way, um, but I just don't know what they are right now. Okay, so we're at 1.6. Um, I successfully managed to keep this up above 4,000 before. It's just that I'm chatting away to you too much and uh, not really sort of focusing 
concentrating on anything. So the bulkhead, um, virtually fireproof airtight security sealed bulkhead that hermetically separates two modules from each other and a water synthesizer which produces water from hydrogen and oxygen for cooling chemical processes and life support. Very important stuff. Current status of Creatives is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. Obviously, if I were to, this is one thing I did do before, was I came in here and if you press the X button you can destroy some cables um, where I don't need two administration centres, I can always shut one down and that means the contracts I'm currently working on should, in theory, uh, be completed quicker, thereby getting more cash. Now we're in a situation because I actually can't do any of these uh, missions. I can do that one once the active mission is completed. It should be pretty quick. Now, where's the ADM at zero percent? Oh really? It was running off of this administration, not the other one. Oh, I didn't mean to do that either. Put the administration back in. I, I, I quite literally thought um, it was. Uh, just swap over to the other administration building, but no, it seems to. It's kind of a bit of, bit of an irritation, to be honest. Mm, obviously, it's the first time I've done that. It's going to take me a little while actually to get back on an even keel here. And again, whichever one of these is running, and I don't know which one is running, um, cutting anything off is going to have an active impact on the mission. The monetary resources of the station are on a critical level. It is advised completing some additional contracts to improve the situation. I can see that the, the contract is still being completed, so I can shut that down for a minute. Um, I'm going to hold on to both of those because we've got 192 people. And, uh, they've just gone down to 44% each. So I can cut that and I can cut that. I'll bring the efficiency of this habitat module up and hopefully I know we are losing people bit of a shame but hey if contracts are getting completed quicker then maybe that's okay that's we're at 2.7 once I get to 4,000 K All right, let's get a station overview. Let's look at the module glossary. Let's look at this environmental control. So how do I get, how do I build an environmental control? Let's, I'm going to try and figure out here. Yeah, I, I 
don't think we have access to it right now. Again, um, it's kind of where the tutorial kind of slips up a little bit. It doesn't really tell you how you can get access to that. I'm just going to go against everything I said and re-implement this. And uh, even consider possibly adding another one in a second once the finances are up. Because um, we need to unlock the next section to be able to get um, the next mission on the go. But I guess, you know, in, to, to some degree, um, it is very much a puzzle solving exercise. I'm not sure it was intended to be that, if that makes sense. So that bulkhead is probably going to be quite important at some point. Right now I can't sort of jump ahead of the game. Neither of those are running at particularly high efficiency. Do I need another another airlock? Do you think? Might improve things. Who knows? Um, okay, mission completed. completed. You see we're at 3000k now so it's quite easy to get your money back up. Just a bit demanding. Um, go for that one. Right, so whilst we're here trying to figure this out I'm going to extend this section. This as well. Didn't realize that. Okay, that's something new. That's going to be more useful than those animals sticking out the way they are. I'm kind of trying to, I'm not really sort of doing anything proactive here. I'm just trying to think ahead what I might need. In the future, what sort of sizes they might be. I mean, it's pretty much guesswork. I have three extension modules there that I can send in a multitude of directions.
if it's going to let me do it, but we're going to try and put in another airlock. So it won't let me get the airlock in because we don't have access to it from afar. So if I go here instead, that should let me. Bigger, more complicated contracts coming in now. Uh, but we're so short of money, I'm just going to take whatever I can get access to. So the mission uh, is still unattainable. I did see something pop up in the top right hand corner, which may mean I've unlocked the ability to research. It would be research. We have seven research options now. So we've got a radio dish, terminal. Lightweight, low energy computing and data unit used for controlling programmable or analytical tasks as requested by all other supported module system combinations and bulkhead and auto synthesizer. Okay, so what did I need? The monetary resources of the station are on a critical level. It is advised completing some additional contracts to improve the situation. See where this game is going. Sixty percent. Hurry up, down. So already, I'm, I'm, you know, it's only on medium difficulty, but already I'm struggling to maintain the income. Uh, if I s slow down the speed of the game, it would probably help me quite a bit because the whole time I'm not working on the contract. time I'm faffing about I really ought to pause the game or slow it down at the very least. So I'm spending more than I'm earning. Room. 250, 250 people we need. <clears throat> Still, the airlocks are only running at 63%, which means that all of our capacity is only at 63%. Um, so I, I don't know. I think I just need to build more airlocks, which just seems a bit weird, if I'm being honest. Off at an angle like that. Now, although it looks weird, that could work out pretty well. 
The monetary resources of the station are on a critical level. It is advised completing some additional contracts to improve the situation. No idea if I'm doing the right thing. So you're still running at 53%. I don't think that's quite right. Now, the environmental control is only running at 88% right now. That's probably having an impact. Um, I wish I could figure out where the environmental control... Wow, the environmental control system. I would like to get that working. You can see the problem. Um, I need the environmental control, and I'm not very sure how the hell to get to it. that in order to get access to some modules you need to have other modules running as well um, current status of credits is getting critical it is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts yeah things are definitely running slowly right now not ideal You can, of course, um, I haven't told you this, but you can, of course, remove uh, components that you've built, uh, which obviously makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, I've got three jobs on the go there. Right, so I'm just going to take out, take out. That's actually boosting that. That's gone up to seventy-four percent. So, like in a in a real spaceship, I guess um, it is about managing the power that we have uh, over the uh, resources we need. So, yeah. That, that part of the game I definitely like. Um, if, for example, this thing over here, um, I don't like it, I can always hit the X button once it's selected and dismantle the whole bloody thing. Um, 
Whether or not I get any credits back, I don't know. But uh, yeah, there is that as an option. And it's probably an option that you're going to have to use as well. Um, I kind of get the impression this is a game you need to fail at a few times before you get to a position where you can really progress. Um, what I might do, you see this one here, this job here, that requires a radar, so if I go into research and just look at the radar, I'll take 80 ticks, I might have a go at that yet, because that will open up some new options, but then it's probably So if I go to module glossary again, and, uh, swing over to the thing we're trying to unlock, uh, in terms of trying to... Current status of credits is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. 250 people will allow us to unlock that module that we need, uh, and we're not far off that now. Let's just see if there's any... Modules, there's not. Um, yeah, just a money problem right now. Let's fast forward things a bit. That's some pretty decent money there if I just had the radar. So I'm gonna I'm going to risk it and I'm gonna put a radar in. Uh, if I can navigate to the correct section. Which I be about there. Um, now bear in mind I don't know how big this radar is. This might go horribly wrong. As soon as that's complete, I think I can do the research. Or can I do it now? No. As soon as that is complete, though, I can. Oh, man. What does it need? Red army research. So I can, I can start that mission affecting my research. is a bit pickledy pickledy you can see that massive section in the middle where I was talking too much and uh, we were just hemorrhaging money or credits as I should say so if we're lucky we'll get another contract that just requires the Administration suite, there's nothing there at the moment. Um, so we might need to get a bit lucky here. But uh, as soon as that's done, I can then grab a job that's uh, going to pay 2,000 credits, which is quite a big job for us. So. Nice. It's out of this financial mire pit that we're currently stuck in. Possibly. Maybe. Yes, nice. 
civil aviation. Uh, no, it won't be in aviation. But, uh, it's another contract on the go, which is good news for us. Obviously, I've got to build the radio dish, um, install it, connect it to all the systems, which in turn will reduce the efficiency of everything. So it's not it's not win win win, but uh, hopefully it's. Uh, 250 people? No, I still got 236. So frustrating. Do I just need to build another module for people to sleep in? Is that, is that what's holding us up here? I don't know. Right, 3% more and we'll have access to this radio dish. extra contracts I can run there. So get that on the go. Current status of credits is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. So here I'm going to try and put another workforce in. Pretty close together, but that seems to be working. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if I come in here. So I don't know if this is actually going to work or just sort of hinder me. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of habitat modules, a whole bunch of uh, modules. But I'm thinking if I just need one more habitat to get up to 250, then pushing us in a direction of progress. Right, so whilst that's ticking over, we've got 241 supply. It doesn't seem to be going up is the problem. It seems to be stuck at 241. I don't know, 242, okay, we only need eight more people, isn't it? People don't work. Um, but by installing this radio transmission y type of thing that I was talking about before, uh, it may screw this sort of up. It may take away resources that we actually need. So there's the radio. That's huge. It's chuffing and There is good. Let's stick it there. And then presumably by building it here, break every damn thing possible. Oh, look at that. It requires something pink. We don't have that pink thing, whatever the hell it is. Pink and blue. Where does blue come from? Environmental control? Yeah. I'm going to put it there. Uh, oh, that says no. Right. 
current status of Creedits is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. Yeah. Audit with a surprise. Let's run that whilst we can. Let's get some good money on it. Um, so the radio dish is a bit of a disappointment. It's not connected yet because it requires that pink thing. Whatever the hell that is. I'm literally looking at the icons now to try and figure this out. The terminal. I think we've unlocked a terminal, right? Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> Let's go into research. Let's look at the terminal. So all I need for the terminal is the lab. As soon as proof of life is uh, completed, I'll speed things up. I can uh, research that um, module and hopefully, theoretically, uh, get the radio working. Which will unlock new jobs and a new power source. Take 120 ticks. Drones for battery for unmanned, unarmed, excuse me, short range, particularly autonomous drones. Each of them is equipped with a class 4 sensor array and has a maximum cargo, cargo capacity 625 kilograms. Attachment points for 16 single drones. So, uh, yeah, I think combat is going to be something in this game. Too soon because uh, they didn't quite feel ready for that. Truth be told. Current status of Creedits is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. Yes, financially we are a little bit short of cash. We may be in trouble here. Hopefully that last contract will be enough just to keep us afloat. It's going to be 600 credits. It's going to take a while. Well, the ADM is running at 0%. Oh, because it's already been used by this. But that's already finished. Oh, that's so frustrating. They finished the ADM uh, progress there. But um, for some reason, uh, oh no, this one isn't going to. This one isn't going to complete. Neither of these are going to complete. That's not going to complete because we don't have the radar active. Right, stop time. I'm going to have to come into the finance overview and get a loan here because of that mistake. So I'm going to take a loan. <clears throat> I'm going to take a loan. So now we've got the cash. Um, I can go. I can continue. 
continue working. In case you didn't follow what happened there, uh, the radar that's required to complete this job, you see here the RD1, uh, is not currently operational because we don't have the terminal. But until the terminal is completed, built and installed, this will not complete. And because we started this mission using the ADM, this other job here, which just requires the ADM, which isn't currently being used, is not available. So that's where the sort of management aspect of it comes in. Uh, so we're going to have to push this through. We're going to have to take a big loss to get the terminal in. And um, yeah, this I think this is, again, failure of the tutorial. I mean, the information is there, but it's not really explained to me in a way that makes me immediately aware of it. Um, I am aware of it now, but only through trial and error. So I've had to take out a loan to cover myself whilst that mistake is uh, progressing. And you can see our money is going down super quickly. So that could be the beginning of the end of this uh, playthrough anyway. It's 300,000 we spent just on this. Let's just see if there's any contracts. This one should complete. We're going to switch back to normal time and um, we'll try and get this uh, module installed as quick as possible. Administration module, airlock, habitat, laboratory, radio dish, briefing center, airlock, commerce system. Where is it then? It must be in here. Three way switch, four way switch, six way adapter, adapter, bridge, bridge, arch, two way switch. Serious problem. Research to unlock at 180. I built the wrong thing. Let me check this out, sorry. Um, so, no, what's that pink thing? Terminal, right. So I need to build a terminal. Yeah? Current status of credits is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. Yeah, I think we're screwed. Uh, lightweight, low energy computing data unit terminal. Uh, we've unlocked it. We've got access to it. Um, does the terminal only exist in here? Now this is exactly what I'm talking about. I just pressed the R1 button there trying to see if it unlocks something and now I've got tritium batteries, I've got environmental controls, I've got airlocks. Oh, I take that back for a second there. I thought it was actually going to let me build something but no, it's just an overview. 
so I can't build extra batteries or extra anything. Super low on credits again. Okay. That pink thing. The pink icon right there. Looks like a terminal to me. So I've unlocked the terminal, haven't I? It doesn't say I need to unlock it. a sneaky suspicion I think I might know perhaps I need to connect it to not a blue section Current status of credits is getting critical. It is strongly advised taking on some additional contracts. So again, that's something that could have been better explained in the tutorial. I was left scratching my head there for a bit. I've probably screwed up this Let's Play because I'm just going to run out of money before I can achieve implement this. Um, as well hell but that's kind of the gameplay I find interesting I find it engaging there's a reason why I can't connect to that blue is it overloaded So if I knock out the habitat module here, can I now do it? Still not. Okay. different type of power input I think it is oh I get it now I see it it's that water generating power energy resource thing oh god that's a whole nother bunch of research okay I've learned so much in this playthrough but this is why I wanted to do it this way because I could spend hours playing this game and I have played hours playing this game 
only to fail. Current status of didn't understand is something critical. It is strongly to taking on some additional contracts. 20 minutes to an hour ago. That is the problem with this game. I think it's a good game. I think it's a great game. I enjoy playing this game. I like the complexity of it. I just feel like the tutorial doesn't give you quite enough information to get you up and running quick enough. Um, and yeah, so many mistakes here are just literally, you know, yes, there's a different icon there, but having built everything based on color, you can see that this blue and that off blue are so very similar. It's an easy mistake to make. Anyway, this gameplay is over. Um, hopefully I've shown you quite a lot of the game. And, you know, if you're just looking for a, a guide to help you through, then hopefully I've helped you in that regard. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.